Listen to the Vibes. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Listen to the Vibes. I'm very happy to welcome Jennifer Johnson here, who is an ER nurse, an author, and an intuitive. So we're going to get to know her and have a great conversation. Jen, tell us a little bit more about you. So I'm Canadian, if you can't tell by the accent. Um, <laughs> we hide it pretty well. <laughs> Sometimes we put it on a little bit extra just to kind of mess with people. Um, but, uh, I'm an ER nurse. It's been 16 years of um, working hospitals, big and small, all over um, Ontario, north and south. Um, so have been doing that and um kind of tooting along until, you know, COVID and everybody kind of hit the same wall. And um, with that kind of came a pretty low, low and um, just started writing. And uh, what started out as a trauma journal now has morphed into uh, a book on intuition and nursing. And um, yeah, it's, it's very suddenly taken me all sorts of places. So I'm uh pretty excited. I'm still at the bedside part-time. Um, I can't see myself ever leaving the bedside at just emergency nursing. There's just too many good stories, but I uh, love what I do and and hoping that with the book, uh, maybe we can get the word out that intuition is now proven by science and looking to have it kind of come out of the 3 a.m. conversation um you know while we're talking ghost stories that kind of thing <laughs> and you use your intuitive abilities to d diagnose people so i can't diagnose as a nurse right. but um you know we all have the intuitive ability to kind of pick up and hone especially nursing um you know somebody's not looking so great maybe their color is a little bit off you know they're not as pink as they could be you know maybe they're acting a little bit off you know there's Sometimes something just kicks up where it's like, okay, something else is going on. I may not know exactly what it is, but um, I'm going to go back to my doc and say, hey, like, I don't know what's going on with Mrs. So-and-so, but like, my gut's telling me something's not right. And, uh, you know, God bless the docs that we work with. Um, they've kind of figured out just how kooky I am. And uh, they're they're very good at, okay, let me just go take a quick peek and and make sure that you know, what you're saying is right or wrong or, or whatever else. And um, my hope is to kind of bring this to newer nurses to say that, you know, you're, you're, you're right on point. It is just another skill that we can learn and let's get, let's, let's bring this forward now that we've got evidence to support it and uh, let's get you trusting your gut. And it's not something that you're not already doing, especially as a female, but let's kind of hone it in a little bit and, and bring it and, and help support our patients. Do people give you a hard time when you do that? Sometimes, um, you know, in the beginning, you're very cautious about it, right? Cause unless you're told to trust your gut, you kind of think that, Oh, maybe I'm just being overcautious or maybe I'm just, I'm making things up or I'm, I'm way off base. And sometimes it's, you know, you finally get to a point where you're like, no, something's wrong. I just need you to take, to take a look. And so most docs who are pretty, um, pretty well versed, especially in the emergency, um, if somebody comes up to you and says, hey, something's wrong, I'm not sure, but I just need you to take a look. The good ones will stop and come and take a look. Um, the newer ones sometimes kind of give you a hard time to be like, well, their vitals are pristine and, you know, they, they look okay. Like, I don't understand. And you're going, okay, but I'm telling you, can you just come take a quick look? And, and sometimes you get brushed off a little bit and um, it's not until somebody, you know, has said something's going to go wrong and, and you're charting as you go, no new orders received by physician. And, uh, and if something happens to go sideways, you, you'd hope that the, the physician learns to to maybe trust us a little bit more. I've run across some really good nurses and doctors, but I've run across some that are just awful. <laughs> I, I went into the hospital with some stomach problems and could they couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. And, you know, they hook you up to an IV and all that good stuff. Well, I'm diabetic. Oh, and... No. They would come in and they would check my, my blood sugar and it was spiking really high and they couldn't figure out why. And I had a 
friend of mine who's she's not a nurse she actually works in as a pharmacy tech she went and looked at my my iv and they had me hooked up to glucose oh, oh goodness <laughs> so oh, yeah you know. things happen right like um some of the the iv fluids you know especially um, two thirds and a third, I think actually has dextrose in it, but it doesn't very, you know, it just says two over three plus one over three. And that's the major thing of what you see. You don't really see that. Oh yeah. By the way, in the byline, there's like, you know, glucose in there and some dextrose and, you know, as well as some salt water and the rest of it. So it's, <laughs> I'm hoping somebody learned. I'm really hoping somebody learned. <laughs> I was none too happy to say the least. That's uh, fair. That's absolutely right. I hope you don't mind me getting a little personal here, but what has been one of the greatest hurdles in your life? Ooh, greatest hurdles. Um, easily the one that comes quickest um, to mind is just the bullying that mm. is within nursing. It's so pervasive and, you know, it's talked about in nursing school. It's like, oh, just be aware that, you know, nurses eat their young and, and this kind of thing. And you're going, okay, so you're telling me this in nursing school. So it's accepted or it's not accepted or it's for sure going to happen. You know, they warn you. And it's just like, of all the things you could have warned me about, you're taking the time to warn me about this. So I, I guess it, it, it almost sets you up for a little bit of like, this is going to happen. It's an accepted practice. Um, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And man, it is awful. Um, the first five years of my career, um, my one supervisor, I don't know what I did to her, but man, she hated me and, uh, just made life hell. Um, and so it's just one of those things where it's, you know, you're coming into nursing, you're, you're coming in super green and super excited and, and you want to just help. And then here are these co-workers who are have 20 30 years on you and they're they're purposefully almost setting you up for failure and it's you know mm. oh it's sink or swim and and there's no support and it's you're just going like this is we're supposed to be the caring profession right like I don't understand why we're doing this to each other like I mean everything you know falls downstream so I, you know if you take a step back you kind of go okay well you know, maybe she's kind of give, been given a hard time from up top and that's just kind of all coming downhill. But at the same time, you're like, I have done nothing wrong to deserve this. You know, if I have, please tell me so I can correct. But I don't think that there was anything I was ever going to be able to do to, uh, to help that situation. So, you know, silver linings, you just kind of take a step back. And you're like, OK, well, had she not been so awful? I probably wouldn't have ever been as motivated to leave that lovely little town. Um, and I probably wouldn't have moved into the very supportive hospital systems that I've been previously. Um, I wouldn't have kind of grown my, I wouldn't have grown my intuition. I would have just kind of probably s stalled right where I was. Mm -hmm. And so truth be told for as awful as she was, silver lining I I was going to be the most educated nurse to get out of that place and I'd like to say I was I don't know actually know for sure but you know made me kind of push forward and get some extra you know certificates and learning and do more clinical and um and try to absorb as much as I could um with the time that I was given so silver linings um yeah, she's getting a signed copy of the book, that's for sure. Um, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's it's one of those things where you're trying not to be bitter, but you can't quite help it because it's just human nature. <laughs> you know. My youngest son is a nurse. And oh, good on him. He's had a lot of trouble with others being very unprofessional and he's yeah. I kept saying, Why in the world does he keep moving around? But now I think I understand why yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I didn't you realize till I wrote the book that when I was going through the chapters about bullies I'm like oh that's why I was moving around every year like almost at the year mark that's why I was moving around from unit to unit mm -hmm. to unit was because I ended up running up against these bullies and I didn't realize that my reaction was just to 
to flee. Like it's not worth my time. I'm not changing the culture. These people have been here way longer than I have. So see ya. Adios. <laughs> right. So you must have a love hate relationship with that. I do. It's, it's hard. Um, you know, you try and take it in stride and, and t- come at it from different angles and, and try to see it takes many years to kind of come back to a place where you're well enough mentally to look back and go like, okay, obviously she must have been dealing with something at home, you know, maybe who knows the bullying she came up to when she was going through school in the nurse, like for nursing in like the forties and fifties kind of thing. You know, she was Irish, so she was coming from a whole different continent over to, to Canada and, and, you know, who knows what hardships she kind of did there. So I like to say that I'm grown enough now that I can come around and say, you know, oh, you know, I'm so big of a person that I understand where she was coming from. I don't, I really don't, but it's put me in the position where nobody is getting eaten in, in my presence. Like it's not happening. We're not tolerating the sink or swim mentality. We're supporting, we're taking care of each other. And like, that's what we need to do moving forward. So you said this is kind of the reason why you wrote the book. Yeah, it's it's part of it. Um, COVID was just, you know, the tipping point that any any stress that was already on the system or on the person, it just magnified it 100%. So I just kind of took a step back and said, okay, well, you know, let me start writing down. Well, you know, the, the idea was... Um, had I not survived COVID because in the beginning we didn't know if we were going to or not. Um, You know, I'm going to start writing down some memories for my kids kind of thing. So it started out as, you know, here's some of the the stories that mom had, like these were mom's good stories that kept her being a nurse and kept her being fun. Um, And of course that laid way to the, the not so fun stories, but it was writing those out and kind of really looking at them going like, Oh, like I'm, I'm doing this. Like I'm, I'm, it's a skill. Like I'm not just really good at my job. It's not just, I have some weird information tucked in the back of my head. It's no, there's something more going on here. So that was what kind of, you know, in reassessing those stories, it was what was kind of cued me up to go like, Oh, maybe there's a little bit more going on here than, and what we understand and and let's see if there's actually some science to back this up what else would you want the public to understand about nurses we're just people we're not heroes we're not saints we're not infallible we 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 make mistakes we we're just people um And so we understand that when you come into the emergency department or you're coming to visit your loved one and things aren't going well and you've got a lot of stress on your plate and you've got a lot of really big emotions that are super heavy and you may not know how to deal with them, we do understand to a point when you kind of come at us a little bit, um, but the the verbal and physical abuse um, is, is absolutely intolerable and um we're getting better now at being able to say no 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 this isn't going to happen you know still trying to be very polite and professional about it um but sometimes if you go a little bit too far you kind of crack our 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 barriers a little bit and you might see a little bit more of the the street side of <laughs> nursing <laughs> So I don't think you want to see that side because it's not pretty at all. Um, You know, we deal with a lot of um, crap from all angles. And so, you know, if you want to try to be the one to push us that much further, you might get, you know, 10 years worth of pent up kind of uh, aggression. So we might just kind of verbally give it to you. So um that's on the one end but on the other end honestly we don't get thank yous we a thank you card goes so far um even to learn my name um when people actually learn my name it it catches me off guard when they're like hey jen and i'm like what who because i'm just (laughs) i'm used to people just nurse nurse and you're just like yes what can i do for you and and this kind of thing but a thank you goes so, so far. Um, baked goods, uh, 
man, if you've got a party and you've got so many leftovers, just drop it off to your local Emerge. Nobody will ask any questions. We, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just feed the nurses because we're all starving. We don't get enough breaks. Um, and coffee is always, always, always appreciated. So um, just a thank you is really, you know, the the best thing you can do for your for your your personal nurse or, or nurses that you've come into contact with. Um, and yeah, just to kind of keep in mind that we are people too. And if you were to say these things to somebody working at McDonald's, you would you be arrested? Yes, no, maybe so, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> just maybe keep that in mind when uh, when you want to lose your cool and and understand that we get it. We know where you're coming from, um, but we might just have a lot on our plates also. Well, not to make excuse for anyone's bad behavior, because you should be considerate. And I know not all nurses are like this, but yeah. when the pandemic was going on, there were nurses here in the United States that were complaining about how tired they were and how overworked they were, but yet they were doing dances on TikTok and stuff like that. And that kind of you know, ticked off some people. It skews the perspective a little bit, right? Like I, and I was right there with them, right? Like, um, so I, at the time had two young kids, they were just going into school and um, this was before kind of the, the virtual learning started up in Canada. Um, but I was working straight nights, four nights in a row. I, we didn't have childcare cause all the childcare had been, um, shut down. Mm -hmm. My husband was also essential. So he was also working Monday to Friday, eight to four. Um, and so I would stay up all night. I was lucky if I got a, a break, you know, during the night shift, we would, we were able to take really decent breaks, which was a lifesaver. Um, but I'd be up all night and then I'd be up all day with my kids. And I, maybe I'd be able to sneak away for a nap, you know, when my husband got home before I went back into nights. And then like, I, I was a basket case. Uh, I probably shouldn't have been nursing to be frank and honest. Um, but we all knew that this is just what needed to be done. And, and so you showed up and, um, People, you know, were so lovely for the first time ever. And to be very honest, like it was so weird for people to be like, oh my God, healthcare heroes. And you're going like, weren't you just spitting in my face last week? Like, I can't understand what's going on. <laughs> like, this yeah. is really weird. You know, I, I equate emergency nursing to like being in a, an abusive relationship with the public so when you know everybody was super nice and and here's gifts and here's food and and all these things and we're all just kind of like deer in a headlights going um sure thank you um okay it was just very <laughs> weird so now that the kind of regular dynamic is back thankfully not to the the level it was pre-pandemic but the you know frustrated with the system, frustrated with the healthcare in Canada, ER wait times, that kind of thing, that frustration is back. And so that kind of, it feels normal again, a little bit, which is kind of <laughs> nice, not nice, but it's, you know, if I can predict your behavior, if I can expect your behavior, then I can already kind of be pre um, ready to, to have my really super nice nurse face on and, and, um, and just, uh, win you over with um an abundance of kindness and warm blankets <laughs> <laughs> i can sort of relate i used to work in public works and okay i was in the water department and we had a summer where we were having break after break after break and trying to get out there and fix them as fast as we could and then you'd have to shut off the water because the water's blowing so hard you can't fix it until you get the water shut down and yep. people come out and cuss you out and everything else but mind you there were times i'd work three days straight without going home oh. and you're doing everything you can to get people's water back on and they just cuss you up and down they didn't they give a flip but well because they can't understand right like without you right a lot of people they can't see past their own needs and especially in the emerge um, I mean, we will, we will be working a true emergency and, and be really caught up with that. And it'll be very heavy emotionally and people will walk into the room as you're 
doing life-saving measures. And they're like, well, um, I asked for a warm blanket and a cold glass of ice for my mom 25 minutes ago. And you're like doing compressions. You're going, ma'am, like you can't be in here. Like you need to go. Right. And, and, you know, that will be the, the complaint that comes forward was that we weren't, uh, nobody was around because we were all in the code, you know, trying to save a life, but people can't come to terms with there is a much larger world than just your narrow little view. And so oh, once you kind of come to terms with that, you're like, okay, let me kind of tweak this a little bit and let me pop my head in and and see, you know, is there anything I can do for you? You know, just quick pops in and out. Um, if you're, if you're a long talker, you're going to see me very slowly back out um, of the door, <laughs> very, <laughs> very slowly, very nicely, but I'm going to have to go and back out. Um, if you happen to ever notice that your nurse is, is being tapped out by another nurse to be like, Oh, we just need you for something over here. Like multiple times, you might be the, you might be the long talker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well let's move on to the book again you said it, sure. it's coming out in november november 1st so oh. uh 111 it's a new moon it's uh i went full bore and and talked with uh, an astrologer to kind of look at my my houses and and my astrology and say okay what what works best and um, November 1st was it. So as much as I hate waiting, um, <laughs> it's finally coming. Uh, so yeah, trying to get that organized, trying to go to a couple of different conferences. So going to health in Vegas in October, which is massive, uh, seeing nurse Blake in Orlando, uh, in September, um, just, I'm just gonna, you know, fly by the seat of my pants and just have a blast with it. And where is it going to be available? So it's on Amazon for pre-order right now. Um, the e version is available for pre-order. I'm not sh quite sure what the holdup for the physical pre-order version is, but I'm trying to scooch it out. Um, but yeah, uh, Ingram Sparks, hopefully Barnes and Noble, all the all the big places. Mm. Do you have a website? I do. It's um, www.nursegen with two n's dot ca. And what is your social media? Uh, I'm on Instagram at ernurse.gen, again, with two N's. I'm on TikTok, ernurse.gen, with two N's. Um, you can find me on Etsy. Um, I've got a couple of um, shift journals uh, on there to kind of keep track of shifts and see how you're doing and keep track of your um your mental abilities. And, and um, there's a grief journal also on there. Um, but, you know, just trying to hopefully get people realizing that they're, they're having more wins in a day as they first start out than, than losses and the little wins, they don't tend to stick as nicely as the big wins. And it takes a couple of years usually to get a nice big wing win that you can lean back and go like, you remember that time that I suctioned that guy and I saved him? Yeah, I do. So that's, you know, okay, I know what I'm doing. My job's fine. I'm, I, I'm a good nurse. I know what I'm doing. So sometimes it's hard to kind of remember the little wins. So the, the hundred shifts journal that's up on Amazon and Etsy, um, it's a, a great gift, um, especially for newer nurses coming out and just kind of like keep track of your shifts. You know, how many steps did you do? How much water did you get? Did you sleep? Um, you know, little questions for yourself that you want to write down and then write down the wins. You know, you, you advocated for a patient. You you knew the medication, what it was for without having to look it up. You you were able to change a patient in, while they were still in a bed in like one go. You know, just the, the weird little niggly things that we forget are wins. Um, yeah. Everybody needs, we're all learning. So it's just a nice way to kind of keep track of it. Well, Jen, thank you so much for coming on the show and, and best of luck with your book. Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure. I appreciate it. And I also want to thank all you folks out there. If you are new to the channel, I hope you'll come back. Please hit that subscribe button. And for my regulars, you guys are awesome because you make it possible for me to do this. Until the next one, everyone, please take care. Be kind to one another. God bless and... Peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Listen to the Vibes. 
You can catch us on Buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favourite podcasts. And on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network.